Shalom, Ari. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me. Look, obviously, with the terrible events happening in in, in Israel, um, I just really want to first pass on the condolences of myself, and I don't think it's I don't think it's inappropriate for me to say pretty much all of the Cairns community for full for what's happening over there. But if I could get you to tell me what's how is these terrible events, how are they affecting the Jewish community here in Cairns and in far north Queensland? Yeah, so first of all, um, thanks again so much for having me. It, it really means a lot uh, that you're reaching out to our community and, and our community thanks um, the support that we've received. And, and we have received a lot of support from a lot of different places. Uh, obviously, it's, it, it's very scary what's happening in Israel. It's even more scary to see um, the how it's reaching us on our shores here in Australia. When I saw the, uh, uh, the, the, the protests outside the Opera House saying, gas the Jews, um, that showed that it's not about Israel, that there are people that just hate Jews, that had nothing to do with Israel. And specifically at a time where there is nothing that you could blame Israel for. There was, it, it, there was, there was nothing um, um, that, that could ever have elicited such barbarism. Um, such a lack of humanity, um, and 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 yet uh, at the same time we are seeing a lot of a lot of outpouring of support from different places. I was definitely appreciative that the mayor uh, uh, sent me a letter um, uh, of, of his condolences. Um, I even had neighbors of mine that came over um, with notes saying thank. Um, saying their appreciation to us as well. So it was, it was very meaningful to be able to have the support. The community are definitely going through a lot right now. I've got people coming out of the woodwork, people that I've never seen before. I had one lady that called me up and said she's been living in Cairns. Um, she didn't even know that there were any other Jews that were living here. She thought she was the only Jew in Cairns. She's been living here in 10 years. She called me up. She says, I want to be a Jew again. And that was incredibly meaningful because in Judaism, um, you're always a Jew. It doesn't matter what you do. You're always a Jew and you always will be a Jew. There's nothing can take that away from you. Mm -hmm. And so it was very, very meaningful when she came and, and she wasn't an exception to the rule. This past uh, Friday night, we had 100 people impromptu that came to us to, to just be with family, to just join with other Jewish people. There was no organized rally that, that, that they were coming to. There was no organized official um, service or anything. It was purely just people coming to just be with one another. And that was incredibly meaningful. That people are, are going through all the range of emotions. There's the grief. There's the sadness. There's despair. And it's really important that we all are able to come together to be there for them at this time. Yeah. Even some reprobate Catholics turned up, so, so I'm led to believe. But um, <laughs> one of the it was very special. Even my my daughter's teacher from her school, a non Jewish teacher from her school here in Cairns, came uh, Friday night to to join us for the meal, just because she wanted to show her support to us. Mm. Shabbat shalom. And look, I, I got to say, um, obviously. Those protests and oh, well, protests, that's not the word, right word. Those despicable displays of barbarism um, that are happening, unfortunately, all over the Western world are truly a, a, a great shame. Um, but to see the vast majority of the community backing you, it kind of reminds me, as, as you know, I was, I was in the police at the time when the Christchurch massacre happened. And, you know, the Muslims then were just just terrified. They certainly appreciated your the goodwill and the good messages, that, you know, the goodwill messages that, that you personally sent them and also that I passed on because I remember you know you asked me to pass pass that on and, and I did that um from the community so you know this community support matters and uh you know I, I really just from a personal note I, I will I will get a little bit personal here like it's just you know you you and everybody else need to know that you're you're Australians you're, you're part of the community you're part of our heritage you know there, there were Jewish prisoners incidentally too on on the first fleet, so <laughs> yeah, so you know, it kind of goes goes way back, goes way back. Um, even there, yeah, seven of the se seven members of the first fleet were Jewish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I like to think in the criminal stakes, we Irish, you know, we we out 
<laughs> we outrate you guys. So, you know, if you need something stolen, if you need something broken or something like that destroyed, come see an Irishman. But it's kind of nice to know that there are a couple of Jewish guys in there holding a standing side by side with the guys like me. Well, look, here in, 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 in Cooktown and Cairns were Jewish Jewish uh, graves yep. in the Pioneer Cemeteries uh, from the convicts as well. Hmm. That's right. It goes way, way, way back. Australia has been incredible. We had um, uh, uh, two governor generals that were Australia. The current so governor of Victoria is 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 um, um uh, jewish probably the most famous jewish probably the most famous defense member in australia monash is sir john monash yeah and Not isaac isaac yep. yeah isaac isaac absolutely no john john monash was an absolutely uh, you know amazing man and never hit his judaism either like he was kind of uh, it's like yeah and and the real irony is too is like he he was actually from German Jewish stock, <laughs> really. It's kind of like <laughs> so, you know, you got this German Jewish guy who's moved to Australia, and uh, yeah, ends up fighting the fighting the Germans. Uh, go figure. But to get back to the kind of like serious side of things, um, could you would you mind telling us about because part of the part of the beautiful ceremony that that, that happened on Friday that. Um, uh, that Shabbat meal that uh, uh, that I was had the privilege of being there for was the Kaddish. Would you mind telling people what the Kaddish is? So the Kaddish is a prayer that traditionally is said for people that have passed away. Now, interesting enough, the Kaddish itself doesn't have any mention of deceased or dead people. It is an affirmation of our faith and an affirmation of the, um, the the connection that we have to God. And the idea behind the Kaddish is that there are some people that have passed away that do not have the ability to be able to pray or to be able to do mitzvahs. And therefore, we, as the living, take those that have passed on to heart. So we are doing the bidding of those that have passed away. So we are standing in the synagogue and it is the deceased speaking through our mouths. The deceased can't do the good deeds, can't do the mitzvahs. We can. So we do the affirmation of the faith for them. Mm -hmm. And it's only said for somebody that is in mourning. And, and, and only said for, and, and therefore traditionally, if the synagogue does not have any mourners, that prayer is not said. But today, every synagogue is in mourning over what's happening in Israel. And therefore, we said that prayer in our synagogue. Do you know of uh, any people that have got personal links uh, over there who, who are suffering now? As, you know, I, I know that you have family in Israel, and of course, your wife has, has family in Israel. And uh, Rami Sherman, who visited us just recently too, like, I actually haven't heard from him. I've got to be honest, I'm kind of nervous. It's like, I don't know what happened to the good yeah. major. It is, um, it's, it's very scary. Um, everybody that's here has got some connection. Um, just to name a few that I can think of on the top of my head. Um, yeah, you know, the people in the, the armed recent... services, people in yeah, the armed yeah. services, everyone's been called up over there. People, you know, people, yeah. the people who've lost yeah, but, people. Absolutely, but uh, I mean, so um, you remember most recently we had a bar mitzvah here. Mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, so. One of the ladies here, her 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 three three boys, and one of them has bar mitzvah. Uh, her name is Tammy. She's a, a beautiful neshama here, beautiful soul. Her first cousin. Her first cousin lives on one of the kibbutzes that was attacked. Mm -hmm. A family of five. The father of that family was shot. They don't know any more details other than he was shot. They don't know. If he's there, I don't know if they found the body or if he's alive. They just think he was shot. The mother with two girls was taken on a motorbike to be brought back into Gaza. The terrorists took another motorbike and took a 12 year old boy, Eitan, in the other motorbike. Just before they got to the border of Gaza, the mother found a. Um, a, a blind spot in, in the positioning behind the motorbikes. 
Now imagine the turmoil she had to go through in this decision. It's like Sophie's choice. Yeah. It was literally choosing to jump off the motorbike, holding her two daughters, an incredible risk to herself, and then to run off, and then left with the unimaginable pain of knowing that her 12-year-old is by himself with the terrorists. Or to stay and risk the incredible harm that's going to happen to the two daughters that she had on the motorbike. She jumped off and took the two girls and ran. For 10 kilometers, she ran until she was able to find somebody else that could protect her. Her 12-year-old is now still in captivity. First cousin of Tammy in our community. We have girls in our community who are serving on the front line who don't have a base to go back to. Their 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 parents, you know well. I'm not going to say out of the privacy of, um, of 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 them, but they're serving on the front line. Their base was was overrun. They don't have a base to go back to, and their um the 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 girl has lost comrades, has lost friends, some killed, some taken as 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 uh, as as hostages. Everybody in the community is affected. It doesn't matter who you are because everybody knows somebody, and even if you don't, they're all of they're all our brethren. Everybody is affected in in incredible ways, and 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 it's 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 very painful for everybody. I was talking to uh, those people, and and we won't name them for obvious reasons. And I and I, I said to one of the parents, I said, you know, you must be so you must be both like really scared because of what's happening over there, but also really proud that. You know, your child is is out there uh, defending what she believes in. And she, she was so busy. She goes, well, man, that's what it's like to be Jewish. You're, both <laughs> You're kind of scared and proud <laughs> at the same time all the time. <laughs> that's it. All, all right, mate. Well, that's, um. you know, I just wanted to get your perspective and bring it to the good people of Northern Vibe. So thanks very much for that. I, um, My pleasure all the time.